From the female prison guard who was recorded mid-encounter in a prison cell to the guard who was forcefully pulled in for a kiss by an inmate during a routine check, female guards have had shocking encounters with inmates. In this video, I will be filling you in on the life-altering experiences female prison guards have had at the hands of inmates. Rachel Wilson in the summer of 2021, a scandalous incident took place in Addywell Prison in West Lothian, Scotland. A shocking video surfaced, showing a female prison officer, Rachel Wilson, in a passionate kiss with inmate Kevin Hogg. Rachel Wilson had only been on the job since spring that year. Little did she know that her brief tenure would end in a scandal that would make headlines. Kevin Hogg, an inmate who was serving a three-year sentence for traffic offences, would end up at the centre of this controversy. But how did this shocking incident unfold? The incident took place in Hogg's modern white-walled cell that he seemed to occupy alone. The 79-second clip begins with Hogg placing a mobile phone on a shelf facing the door, which is a clear indication that his actions were pre-planned. With the camera now in place, he walks around for a few seconds before stopping to take a drink of water, seemingly preparing for what is about to happen. A few seconds later, Rachel Wilson appears at the cell door. The two exchange whispers before Hogg grabs Wilson and pulls her in for a kiss. The kiss lasts only a few seconds, but its impact is huge. After the kiss, Wilson leaves the cell, and Hogg stops recording. The video quickly spread among inmates and staff, reaching as far as Balini Prison in Glasgow. As the footage continued to make the rounds, speculations ran wild. Was Rachel Wilson being blackmailed, or was this a consensual act? Could it be that Kevin Hogg had coerced her into the kiss and was holding the footage over her head? At first, the theory that Hogg recorded the video to blackmail Wilson seemed very likely. The way he set up the phone and recorded the kiss made it look like he had a plan. But as the video spread, it became clear that there was more to the story. If Hogg was trying to blackmail Wilson, he wouldn't have let the video spread like wildfire. Instead, he would have held on to it and used it to make her do his bidding. The way things turned out was proof that he had other intentions. He had recorded the kiss for bragging rights. Hogg wanted to show off to the other inmates that he could get a prison officer to kiss him. The video itself provided important clues to support this new theory. Wilson's body language and lack of resistance indicated that she was a willing participant. If she had been coerced, she would have pressed her panic button but she didn't. In situations of blackmail, the victim usually shows signs of distress or fear. Wilson's behavior in the video doesn't suggest that she was under duress. This points to a consensual act rather than coercion. As the investigation progressed, the theory of blackmail continued to crumble. The evidence pointed towards a different narrative, one of poor judgment and a lapse in professional conduct. While the investigation was ongoing, Rachel was relieved of her duties. However, it is unclear whether or not charges were brought against her. Joanne Hunter. Joanne Hunter, a bright and ambitious young woman, graduated with a master's degree in childhood and youth studies. With her future ahead of her, she was eager to make a positive impact on society. In December 2018, she landed her first job as a prison officer at HMP Forest Bank in Salford. Hunter's new role was challenging, but she was determined to succeed. Little did she know, her life was about to take a dramatic turn. Enter Connor Willis, an inmate with a reputation for being arrogant and a history of criminal activity. Willis was known for throwing his weight around and being being a big player in a crime gang. Despite her initial dislike for him, Hunter found herself drawn to Willis. Their relationship began in early 2019. At first, Hunter didn't like Willis due to his arrogant attitude. However, Willis, sensing her naivety, began to manipulate her, making her believe that he was in love with her. Willis's charm and manipulation worked. Hunter, described as naive and vulnerable in court, believed Willis's declarations of love. She felt a need to return his feelings and do what he asked. It wasn't long before Willis asked Hunter to smuggle packages into the prison for him. Hunter received the packages from an unnamed woman at a Tesco supermarket, and all she had to do was get it in. Despite knowing the risks, Hunter's descent into criminal activity had begun. She smuggled the packages inside the prison and passed them to another prisoner, a member of a crime gang for Willis. Despite Willis offering to pay her 200 to 300 pounds for each package, Hunter refused to take the money. Hunter's actions were driven by her misguided belief in Willis's love and her own vulnerability. Her naive nature made her an easy target for Willis's manipulation, leading her down a path of crime and deceit. By December 2020, suspicions about Joanne Hunter's activities had reached a tipping point. Prison authorities received information that she was smuggling items into the prison, and an investigation was launched to uncover the truth. Hunter was called in for questioning by security managers. Under pressure, she admitted to having a relationship with Connor Willis and smuggling packages for him. This confession was just the beginning of a deeper scandal. A thorough search of Hunter's belongings revealed
revealed explicit photographs and messages she had sent to Willis. These messages included requests from Willis for different substances. The evidence was damning. Further investigation revealed the contents of the packages from the unnamed woman at Tesco supermarket. These packages, which included a juice carton and a Red Bull can, were coated with drugs. Hunter's actions had compromised prison security, leading to an increase in criminal activity, problems of discipline, and a risk of violence. The investigation provided proof of her involvement in the smuggling operation. In court, Hunter pleaded guilty to charges of conspiracy to commit misconduct in public office and bringing or conveying cannabis into the prison. Her lawyer, Richard Orme, argued that Hunter was a naive, impressionable, and vulnerable young woman who had been taken advantage of by Willis. Orme described Hunter as ripe for picking for an unscrupulous criminal to take advantage of her in her first job out of education. He emphasized that Hunter had never had a serious relationship or boyfriend because she was focused on her education. Hunter's dedication to her studies had left her inexperienced in matters of the heart. Orme argued that she was a fish out of water who was out of her depth in a prison environment, making her an easy target for Willis's manipulation. In the end, Hunter received a three-year sentence. The judge justified his decision saying her actions had struck at the heart of criminal justice system. Zuleika Santiago Zuleika Santiago, a 28-year-old woman from Spartanburg, South Carolina, seemed to have a promising career ahead of her. As a correctional officer at the Union County Detention Center on Jonesville Highway, she was entrusted with the responsibility of maintaining order and discipline within the facility. Santiago's position required her to be vigilant, professional, and above all, ethical. However, behind the uniform and the badge, Santiago's life took an unexpected and scandalous turn. It all began with seemingly innocent interactions with an inmate whose identity remains undisclosed. These interactions soon developed into something far more personal. The inmate, serving time for undisclosed crimes, managed to form a bond with Santiago that went beyond the boundaries expected of her role. As days turned into weeks, the interactions between Santiago and the inmate grew more frequent and intimate. Santiago, who was supposed to uphold the law and maintain a strict professional distance, found herself drawn to the inmate. The relationship took a darker turn when Santiago began to engage in intimate interactions with the inmate. According to arrest warrants, she willfully engaged in sexual intercourse with the inmate on multiple occasions. These actions marked the beginning of a scandal that would not only end her career, but also lead to severe legal consequences. Santiago's actions were a clear violation of the ethical standards expected of a correctional officer. Her role was to force the rules, not break them. The bond she formed with the inmate was not just inappropriate, it was illegal. As a result of the power dynamics within a prison setting, any relationship between an officer and an inmate is considered to be a case of abuse of power. Although it's unclear how, the details of the illicit relationship came to light, and almost immediately, an investigation began. When confronted with the evidence, Santiago admitted to her crimes and was relieved of her duty. She was also charged with two counts of first-degree sexual misconduct with an inmate. Santiago Santiago's sentence is not public knowledge, but it's likely that it was befitting of the crime she committed. However, some people believe that since the details surrounding the relationship and the investigation have been withheld from the public, there may have been more to it. Santiago may have been a victim. Tina Gonzalez Tina Gonzalez began her career at the Fresno County Jail in 2016. At just 26 years old, she was seen as a dedicated and hard-working correctional officer. For three years, she maintained a seemingly spotless record, earning the trust and respect of her colleagues. But beneath the surface, a scandal was brewing that would eventually lead to her downfall. The initial discovery of Gonzalez's illicit activities came when the Sheriff's Office's Vice Unit and the Department's Internal Affairs Division received a tip-off. The information suggested that a male inmate had been given a cell phone and was engaging in sexual activities with a correctional officer. This tip prompted an immediate and thorough investigation. As the investigation unfolded, shocking details emerged. It was revealed that Gonzalez had not only engaged in a sexual relationship with the inmate, but had also smuggled various contraband items into the jail for him. These items included a cell phone, which allowed the inmate to communicate with the outside world, and razors. Additionally, Gonzalez provided the inmate with inside information about when officers would be inspecting his cell, allowing him to hide any contraband items or activities. The implications of Gonzalez's actions were severe. By smuggling contraband and engaging in a sexual relationship with an inmate, she had not only violated the rules and regulations of the facility, but had also put the safety of her colleagues and other inmates at risk. The investigation revealed the true extent to which Gonzalez had betrayed the trust placed in her as a correctional officer. Assistant Sheriff Steve McComas, a 26-year veteran of the 
the sheriff's office, was particularly disappointed by Gonzalez's conduct. He stated that in his long career, he had seen and heard some pretty disgusting things, but Gonzalez's actions topped his list. The most shocking revelation was that Gonzalez had allegedly cut a hole in her uniform to make it easier to have sex with the inmate. This act was a complete disregard for the rules and regulations of the facility. When the police had gathered irrefutable evidence against her, Gonzalez was arrested. Despite being caught red-handed, Gonzalez showed no signs of remorse. Phone calls between her and the inmate, recorded after her arrest, revealed that she continually contacted him. When the case was brought to court, Gonzalez pleaded no contest to one count of sexual activity by a detention facility employee with a consenting, confined adult, one count of possession of drugs or an alcoholic beverage in a jail facility, and a misdemeanor count of possession of a cellular device with intent to deliver to an inmate. Despite facing up to three years and eight months in prison, the outcome of the trial would leave many unsatisfied. Prosecutor Caitlin Drake recommended a 15-month sentence, arguing that Gonzalez's actions had severely endangered the lives of her co-workers and other inmates. Drake pointed out the seriousness of Gonzalez's misconduct and the potential risks she had posed to the safety and security of the jail. On the other hand, Gonzalez's defense attorney, Martin Talaisnik, argued for a more lenient sentence. He suggested probation instead of jail time, claiming that Gonzalez had taken responsibility for her actions and was in a vulnerable position at the time, having just ended her marriage. Talaisnik argued that it was never Gonzalez's intention to bring any harm or danger to the employees or anyone else in the jail. In the end, the court sentenced Tina Gonzalez to two years probation and seven months in the county jail. Nakisha Newell. In the heart of Butler County, Ohio, Nakisha Newell had been serving as a corrections officer for just 18 months before things took a dark turn. Her career seemed promising, but little did anyone know that a scandal was brewing behind the walls of the county jail. It all started when a sharp-eyed corrections sergeant noticed something unusual. This sergeant, whose name remains undisclosed, had an educated hunch that something wasn't right with Nakisha's activities. He observed behaviors and actions that raised red flags, which is why he decided to report his suspicions to higher authorities. The Butler County Sheriff's Office, led by Madge Mike Kraft, took the sergeant's concerns seriously and launched an investigation into Nakisha's Nakisha's conduct. The investigation quickly uncovered shocking evidence. Nakisha was found to have smuggled contraband items into the jail, including a cell phone and electronic cigarettes. These items are strictly prohibited within the confines of the jail because their presence is a significant security risk. The discovery of the contraband items was just the tip of the iceberg. As the investigation progressed, more damning evidence came to light. Nakisha's actions were also a violation of the law, but there was more. During questioning about the contraband, Nakisha made a shocking confession. She admitted to having a sexual relationship with a male inmate. This confession confirmed the suspicions of the investigators and made the case all the more complicated. The authorities were now dealing with not only the smuggling of contraband, but also a serious violation of ethical and legal boundaries. As soon as the truth was revealed, Nakisha was fired and charges were brought against her. She was indicted on two counts of sexual battery and illegal conveyance of a communications device into the jail. While speaking with a news crew, the then Butler County Sheriff, Richard Jones, stated that more charges would be brought against her, but this was not the case. During the trial, it was revealed that following her arrest, Nakisha was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. This diagnosis brought on a whole new side to the case. It opened up the possibility that the inmate in question had taken advantage of Nakisha's mental health condition. Despite the new information, Nakisha did not shy away from taking responsibility for her actions. In a statement, she said, I understand that I broke the law, along with that I'm also aware that I have shed a negative light on the sheriff's office disappointed all the honorable officers who work there and are building and their careers. I've disappointed the community in which we live in and broken a huge level of trust. In the end, Nakisha Newell pleaded guilty to one count of sexual battery and was sentenced to two years in prison by a Butler County judge. Kawana Jenkins this shocking scandal took place within the walls of the Fulton County Jail, a place meant to uphold law and order, and it all started with a routine shakedown. During a routine shakedown, deputies were carefully searching for contraband. These searches are standard procedure aimed at maintaining security and preventing illegal items from circulating within the jail. Little did they know, this particular search would uncover something far more disturbing than they had initially thought. Among the items seized was a contraband cell phone. 
As deputies examined the device, they stumbled upon a video that would send shockwaves through the community. The explicit video showed 36-year-old Kawana Jenkins, a detention officer, engaging in a sexual act with a man who would later be identified as one of the facility's inmates. In the video, Jenkins is seen sitting in her uniform, a symbol of her authority and responsibility. Suddenly, a man's finger appears near her mouth, and she performs a sexual act on it. The video abruptly ends, but the damage was already done. The evidence was undeniable and damning. The discovery of this video led to immediate action. Deputies were stunned and quickly reported the incident to their superiors. The gravity of the situation was clear, and the Fulton County Sheriff's Office had no choice but to act swiftly and decisively. While the investigation was ongoing, Sheriff Pat Labonte, committed to transparency and accountability, issued a statement. He emphasized that the actions of one individual do not reflect the values of the entire Sheriff's Office. As the investigation progressed, it was discovered that the man behind the camera was a well-known known inmate in the facility. He had been careful not to show his face, but what he didn't know was that the tattoos on his hand, which was clearly visible in the video, would eventually give him away. Jenkins was promptly arrested and charged with improper sexual contact and cruelty to inmates. Before the trial began, she was relieved of her duties and is likely to face jail time for her crimes. From a detention officer uniform to a Fulton County Jail jumpsuit, Kawana Jenkins's life took a dramatic turn. The once respected officer now faced serious charges, and her career in law enforcement was in ruins. The incident not only tarnished Jenkins' reputation, but also raised serious questions about the security and oversight within the jail. Gemma Cowperthwaite the story begins in July 2014, within the walls of the St. Clair County Jail. Gemma Cowperthwaite, a 27-year-old correctional officer, was known for her professionalism and dedication. However, her life took an unexpected turn when she met a female inmate during her routine duties. The inmate, whose identity remains protected, was serving time for multiple felony convictions. Despite the strict rules and professional boundaries, a connection began to form between Cowperthwaite and the inmate. This mutual sense of connection laid the groundwork for what would become a deeply inappropriate relationship. The relationship took a significant turn when the inmate was granted a work release program in the spring. This program allowed her to leave the jail during the day for work. This new found freedom provided an opportunity for the cow Perthwaite and the inmate to take their relationship to the next level. It was during this period that the inmate began visiting Cowperthwaite's home to use the shower. What started as a show of kindness, allowing the inmate to shower and rest during her lunch breaks, soon crossed the line into a personal and ultimate ultimately criminal relationship. As the relationship between Gemma Cowperthwaite and the female inmate deepened, it was only a matter of time before their secret came to light. The turning point came in April 2015, when rumors of the inappropriate relationship began circulating within the jail. The St. Clair County Sheriff's Department, led by Sheriff Tim Donnellon, took these allegations seriously. On April 18th, an internal investigation was launched to uncover the truth behind the rumors. The department's priority was to maintain the integrity of the correctional facility and ensure that all officers adhered to the highest standards of conduct. As the investigation progressed, evidence began to mount against Cowperthwaite. She was placed on administrative leave pending the outcome of the investigation. The internal examination revealed that the inmate had been visiting Cowperthwaite's home during her work release, a clear violation of professional boundaries. Sheriff Donnellan, determined to uphold the law and maintain the department's reputation, took action quickly. On April 24th, a warrant was issued for Cowperthwaite's arrest, marking the beginning of her legal troubles. Cowperthwaite was arrested and charged with sexual assault with intent to commit penetration, a 10-year felony. The internal investigation had uncovered enough evidence to support the charges, leading to her immediate dismissal from the sheriff's department. The case quickly gained public attention, with the media highlighting the breach of trust and the abuse of power within the correctional facility. The St. Clair County Sheriff's Department faced scrutiny, but Sheriff Donnellan remained committed to ensuring that justice was served. In late May, Cowperthwaite made the difficult decision to plead guilty. This plea was part of a deal to avoid a potentially longer prison sentence if found guilty of the initial charge of second-degree criminal sexual conduct. During the sentencing hearing, St. Clair County Circuit Judge Daniel Kelly addressed the seriousness of Cowperthwaite's actions. He emphasized the betrayal of trust and the abuse of power, stating, no judge should have to worry that a person sentenced to jail will be subject to any kind of sexual abuse. 
Judge Kelly sentenced Cowperthwaite to 10 months in jail, with four months suspended upon payment of fines and court costs. The sentencing recommendation had been 18 months in prison, but the plea deal and Cowperthwaite's willingness to accept helped lessen her sentence. While speaking on the situation, Cowperthwaite said, The relationship was the biggest mistake of my life. I'd take it back if I could. I take full responsibility for crossing the professional to the personal line. However, I do not believe I betrayed the trust of my victim, as she was the one who reached out to me. HMP Wandsworth Correctional Officer HMP Wandsworth, located in southwest London, is one of the oldest and most infamous prisons in the United Kingdom. Built in 1851, the prison has a long history marked by numerous controversies and scandals. Originally designed to house both male and female inmates, Wandsworth now operates as a Category B men's prison, holding some of the country's most dangerous and high-profile offenders. Over the years, Wandsworth has gained a reputation for its harsh conditions, overcrowding, and frequent incidents of violence. In recent years, a BBC investigation revealed that hard drugs are openly abused within the prison, with some staff members allegedly participating in smuggling contraband into the facility. This prison, overrun with corruption, would turn out to be the setting for a shocking video that surfaced on the internet in June 2024. The video, filmed inside one of the prison's smaller units, features two male inmates and a female correctional officer. It begins with one of the inmates holding a recording device in one hand and a cigarette in the other. The inmate's casual appearance and the presence of contraband serve as proof of the lawlessness that exists within the prison. About five seconds into the video, the camera captures the female correctional officer performing an intimate act on the other inmate in the cell. The footage then switches between showing the inmate and the officer and the inside of the two-man cell, which is full of numerous items. The inmates are dressed in casual clothing. Throughout the video, the man behind the camera periodically turns it to himself and makes comments. At one point, he says, this is how we live in Wandsworth, bro. The officer, who appears to be aware that her actions are being recorded, continues with the illicit encounter. Unknown to her, her private moments will soon be exposed to the world. After the encounter, the correctional officer adjusts her uniform and exits the cell perhaps to resume her duties. However, the damage has already been done. The video quickly spreads across social media, sparking outrage and disbelief. The first thing viewers notice is the officer's wedding ring. Further investigation revealed that she is married and has a son with her husband. The video also clearly shows the officer's face and badge, making it easy for viewers to identify her. As the footage circulates online, calls for justice grow louder. In the wake of the scandal, Wandsworth prison officials remain tight-lipped, refusing to comment on the issue. However, it is clear that an investigation will be launched to uncover the details of the relationship between the officer and the inmate. By every indication, the officer is a willing participant in the encounter, but until the investigation is concluded, one cannot completely rule out the possibility that the officer may have been coerced or blackmailed. Although these female prison guards were not physically assaulted, many of them have claimed that they were taken advantage of in one way or the other. Check out any of our other videos by clicking the cards on your screen.